Hello and welcome to the Ohio Health EMS Grand Round Series. My name is Eric Cortez. I serve as the System EMS Medical Director for Ohio Health. I'm joined this morning by Dr. Drew Kelnow, who's one of our EMS physicians and medical advisors for outreach education with System EMS. And we're also joined by our special guest, Nathan Jennings, who's the manager of the Mobile Stroke Transport Unit. This morning, we'll be discussing the Mobile Stroke Transport Unit and its integration into pre-hospital stroke operations in Central Ohio. Uh, Nate, thanks for joining us. It looks like you're uh, broadcasting from the Mobile Stroke Treatment Unit uh, garage. Uh... Yeah, yeah, well, well spoken, uh, and thank you for having me. I very much appreciate the invitation. Uh, yes, this is uh, the mobile stroke treatment unit kind of headquarters, if you will. Uh, I oftentimes say this is a, a you know an Ohio Health undisclosed location, uh, but we sit just outside of the central Ohio or central point to the city of Columbus by about a mile to the east side of that. Well, thanks again for joining us. This is exciting, and we're very interested in hearing more about the mobile stroke treatment unit. Yeah. Um, it sounds like and you're getting I a dispatch know, there too. They are. So ironically, as, as we talk um, about this unit, we'll kind of see these folks come out and, and get ready to, to hit the road uh, to go out and provide the services that the mobile stroke treatment unit is meant to do. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about, about kind of how this is set up. Um, but nonetheless, um, these dispatches are processed through the City of Columbus Fire Division and the Fire Alarm Office. And so that, that uh, announcement that you hear in the background is a computer-generated dispatch that allows this unit to be advised of which direction they should be heading. Um, and in the next few moments as this plays out, um, you know, this team is going to be working directly with EMS providers that are responding on a local community level um, and coordinating with them kind of the signs and symptoms behind what the, the, the patient is presenting to them and whether or not the mobile stroke treatment unit is going to be able to play a part um, in that process. Hey, that's super cool. Uh, if it gets real loud, we'll take a, a quick pause. But tell us more about what this unit is and, and what really it does for those that aren't uh, familiar with what the mobile stroke unit provides to Central Ohio. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I know you point out that it's, it's kind of noisy as these folks head out the door. So we'll kind of pause for a moment here um, to answer that question. Um, but absolutely, the unit is very unique and very, very specialized in the sense uh, that it is bringing very specific neuro care to the local level, whereas oftentimes in the past, we have to coordinate those, those patients arriving to a regional healthcare site uh, to provide and, and receive some of the care uh, that they, they need to have. So um, I'll pause and let them pull out here, and then we'll go from there. Very good. I'm sure some of our audience might be thinking uh, that that was completely a setup, but it was not. Uh, we could not have coordinated and choreographed it any better than that in the moment. Um, but to answer your, your, your question, Dr. Kelno, uh, this unit is built off of one principal hypothesis, and that is around the idea that we understand that healthcare centers and hospitals throughout the United States and beyond do an outstanding job in providing stroke care to uh, patients that are suffering these kind of major events. We know that stroke is the fifth leading cause of death. It is a very much an active part of those patients that we see every day. It is not uncommon for our EMS crews to be dispatched on CVA. The challenge that we understand and recognize is that stroke remains the number one re reason that patients return back home or to their local communities with a permanent disa a disabling uh, factor. And, you know, if we pair that to the fact that we know that healthcare systems everywhere are trying to do a better job in managing CVA, we have to come up with a new solution. And so this unit departing us just a few moments ago is built around the idea that we could or how can we provide stroke care in a little bit of a different way to improve that overall number one reason people are permanently disabled? 
Thank you, Nathan. Can can you discuss a little bit more about the components that are on the stroke truck from an equipment standpoint, from a resources standpoint, and from a personnel standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. Um, this unit, first and foremost, is staffed seven days a week, 7A to 7P. It is staffed with uh, a, a, an advanced practice provider uh, that is representative of nurse practitioners or physician assistants that work in the neuro capacity. We have two paramedics on the unit that come to us via the Columbus Division of Fire. And then we also have a CT technologist that runs the scanner. So what does and how is the mobile stroke unit different from every other EMS vehicle moving about the streets today here in Central Ohio. Primarily, it is the CT scanner. Uh, this, the CT scanner allows us the ability to do imaging uh, in less than two minutes that tells us whether the stroke event that a patient is suffering is having a bleeding stroke, a hemorrhagic stroke, which represents about 15% of our stroke volume throughout the United States, or an ischemic stroke where the imaging will be relatively normal on scan, and that represents 85% um, of our patients. We very quickly know, you know, many of us are learning in the EMS field today that TPA is the principal medication and therapy in an ischemic stroke, again, 85% of that volume. So obviously the unit is equipped with that special medication, but in addition, the mobile stroke unit is not built just on the premise as, as being a vehicle that delivers TPA, but rather it delivers high yield neuro information and imaging back to the receiving hospital. So it comes along with lots of different equipment to be able to help us throughout that diagnosis, not only with that crew, but working in, pro, uh, um, in, in concert with CT imaging and also the laboratory equipment that within itself is why it's it's unique and different from every other EMS vehicle. So that that sounds like an incredible setup. So Nate, this truck got just got dispatched. Tell us a little bit about how that dispatch works and and how the unit interacts with the the scene from EMS. So I'm imagining they're not dispatched solely to whatever the scene is. There's also another EMS agency or fire agency being dispatched, and this truck is headed in that direction depending on what they find. So walk us through what that looks like and, and how that interaction goes. Yeah, so one thing that we know about EMS providers, fire departments, law enforcement, is they are built on the foundation process. Everything has a plan about how to prepare and react to a certain event. And so this has been very well thought out. Um, and you are absolutely correct in the fact that right now there is a paramedic vehicle, a fire engine, and an EMS supervisor heading towards uh, to be that first line of response to these patients that have called 911 this morning. The stroke unit is going to be in contact with them via radio and or cell phone through an algorithm of how EMS arrives, assesses, identifies signs and symptoms. That information being relayed to the stroke team and then an understanding of if the stroke unit is, in le is able to reach them in a timely fashion or rendezvous with the EMS team along the route to the hospital, that we are able to match that patient up to the stroke unit to be able to begin some of that definitive care. So the, the patients on scene, let's, let's take the patient's perspective for a second. Mobile stroke treatment units on scene, we have our EMS agency on scene, what type of assessment's gonna go on, what decisions are being made in regards to treatment, and also what decisions are made in regards to transport destinations. Yeah, so uh, EMS is gonna arrive on scene. They're gonna follow their protocols around the, the stroke assessment itself. We want you know, the obvious and basic vital signs and a better understanding of the events leading up to the reason why 911 was called. So baseline versus how the symptoms are presenting once EMS arrives. Many of our EMS medical directors throughout Central Ohio are utilizing the LAMS protocol. We also know that there's a, you know, a more in-depth understanding of kind of 360 degrees around the brain with whether it's the MENS tool or other just basic neuro tools to identify the signs, signs and symptoms. Oftentimes I think of this as completing a 12 lead assessment of the brain for us to better understand if it's an anterior or posterior stroke. Um, it's much more than what we learned many, many years ago that a patient's going to have left arm, left leg, and left facial droop. 
um, or, or deficits. Now we understand that it could be a multitude of signs and symptoms that are leading us to understand that a stroke event is occurring. So with all of those signs and symptoms, vital signs and baseline information being understood, that will be communicated to directly to the nurse practitioner or physician assistant on board the stroke unit. And then there's dialogue there to better understand if the stroke unit could play a big part in delivering care. You know, oftentimes we respond to a CVA event only to arrive to understand or learn that the patient is diabetic. They're having a seizure. Uh, they're having a significant migraine event with previous history of migraines. And we know that there's a lot of stroke mimics out there. And so very much and oftentimes the stroke unit is acting as that coordinator to better understand those facts uh, from fiction to be able to know whether or not the stroke unit can play a, a strong part in care. So the stroke unit gets on scene, they do their assessment, and they determine that this is a patient they're concerned for some type of vessel occlusion. They've done their initial imaging. How now yeah. does this interface with transport from the scene to the receiving facility? And, and really, how does it benefit patient care as far as expediting maybe care in the ED or activating the neuro services uh, at the receiving facility? Walk us through that part of the, the care plan. Yeah, and that's a great question. And, and I know Dr. Cortez has brought that up earlier. I missed answering that question. So right now here in central Ohio, um, we are transporting those patients to one of the three comprehensive centers. Uh, so that is a, a either Ohio Health Riverside, OSU Wexner Medical Center or Mount Carmel East. Um, we coordinate that based on the patient's medical home or the most appropriate site or the closest, depending on the stability of the patient. Oftentimes we try to honor the patient's wishes, but we also know that sometimes if the patient is unstable, we need to divert to the closest hospital. Um, and we live just very much in the moment as EMS does every day to make those quick decisions um, and have those conversations with patients and family. From the standpoint of how does the care on the mobile stroke unit match or bleed into the care being received in the ED, we are following the same emergency department stroke order sets. Um, so once we arrive on the scene, we identify the basic imaging, we get the necessary vital signs collected, then there is a telemedicine unit on the vehicle itself where one of our vascular neurologists comes on board via telehealth, virtual, and they have an assessment and conversation with the team and the patient about the next steps in that care. And so this is the same type of process that you're going to have in the emergency depart department every day. However, it's going to be at a much tighter timeline or quicker from the time of the event starting to the actual therapy being delivered. Yeah, it seems that the process of mobile stroke in combination with local EMS response yeah. Putting all that together is very similar to what happens in situations without a mobile stroke unit where we do a stroke assessment, we do a stroke severity uh, score, we rapidly transport to an emergency department. The non-contrast head CT helps us go down an ischemic versus hemorrhagic pathway. We we'll have rapid neurological evaluation and assessment, and then we make a determination about treatment, whether that be thrombolysis or thrombectomy. Nate, from right. your perspective, what is the goal of the mobile stroke treatment unit and what, what, what type of benefits are we seeing compared to the typical paradigm of pre-hospital stroke care? Well, the number one goal is to be able to provide therapy much, much quicker than we have in the past. What we know about stroke is for every minute that a stroke goes untreated, we add roughly one week of disability to the back end of recovery for that patient. And so if we think about just 60 minutes, we're well over a year in terms of additional time for that patient that they need to go through rehab or go through experiences of, of being in extended care facilities or skilled nursing facilities. So the number one goal is to move the mark that stroke no longer needs to be the driving uh, uh, reason that folks are permanently disabled. In terms of, you know, and Dr. Hicks, our medical director from a neurology standpoint, he often says the ERs do fantastic work. 
What we also know about emergency departments is the items in which we utilize for treatment and care are spread out over a larger floor plan. Whereas the mobile stroke unit, we've really sifted to the top the items specifically needed for stroke care, and we've placed them within an arm's reach with four folks that train inside of this environment. In fact, you know, you bring up a great point that as we look at the ability to care from the time of the event to the actual, you know, arrival to the hospital and receiving TPA or other types of therapy, we average that at about 68 minutes for normal EMS. So as EMS is called, they go to the scene, they assess the patient, they do the great work that we do every day. The patient is taken to the emergency room. On average, that is 68 minutes. For the last year of operation for the mobile stroke unit, we've taken a look at quite a few of the cases and we have an average of 42 minutes. So that's a decrease of time by 26 minutes, 26 weeks, lots of other factual information there that you could bring forward. But at a very high level, those are some of the numbers we're currently looking at. As you started going down this pathway with the, the rubber hitting the road, uh, no pun or maybe pun intended in this situation as to patient outcomes. Right. <laughs> so we're decreasing time, which we, we know matters. What other data points do you have to support the, the mobile stroke unit being beneficial to the Central Ohio community and really advancing and expediting quality care? Yeah, great question. Right now, we're taking a deeper dive on all of the preliminary data. We're working in partnership with all of the hospital systems to better understand the overall outcomes of these patients. But in a very early take, we look at a couple of, of buckets of information. It's first important to note that data indicates that if a patient has a decrease in their NIH of four points or greater, that is the differentiation between landing in a SNF, a skilled nursing facility, an extended care facility, or nursing home, as many of us refer to them, or inpatient or outpatient rehab. That's a really big deal for stroke patients who want to get back to a normal way of life. So in looking at patients that went via typical uh, emergency room routes, we saw that those points were decreased in the NIH by roughly 2.7 points. So far in our preliminary data, patients on the mobile stroke unit had a decrease of 5.8 points in their NIH. So a pretty significant spread of numbers, while those seem relatively close in relationship, we know that if we think about that number of four and decreased points of the NIH, we are clearly on either side of, of that differentiating factor. Nate, We've been specifically focusing on ischemic strokes with thrombolysis. Uh, two situations that I'd like you to elaborate on. If we encounter a patient on the MSTU that we suspect of having a large vessel occlusion, how do we, yeah. how do we get that patient to thrombectomy in a short amount of time? And the second question to that, if on the non-con head CT we pick up a hemorrhagic stroke, uh, are there treatment options on board to, to, to stabilize the patient until they get to the emergency department and to definitive care? Absolutely. Let me start with the hemorrhages uh, that you bring up. Um, you know, oftentimes one of the biggest concerns that we have with hemorrhages and EMS providers listening to this uh, can relate uh, that they've had those patients in the past that are significant head bleeds and oftentimes we experience airway problems with those folks. But more importantly than that, it's the blood pressure itself. Uh, so we do have some blood pressure management tools on the vehicle to be able to rapidly assess what the bleed looks like on imaging in coordination with the vascular neurologist to be able to, to adjust the blood pressure to a, a more appropriate um, number. Uh, the other thing is we carry all of the airway tools on the unit itself. Uh, so we have a ventilator and, and several other tools for difficult airways that maybe our average EMS providers would not have. And then we are also enrolling in a number of studies, and, and one in particular that we're working on that is very specific to hemorrhages is called the FASTEST study. And so we're going to be carrying several medications on board the unit, partnering with other mobile stroke units throughout the country to be able to look at the ability to administer these drugs much, much uh, faster. Uh, Dr. Hicks, our, again, our medical director for mobile stroke, shared the other day that there is a great deal of efficacy in the various drugs that are being used for hemorrhages. 
the factor remains that it must be done much, much faster. And so it's a great opportunity via mobile stroke programs to take a deeper dive on whether or not we can deliver those drugs in a more timely fashion. Secondly, thrombolysis or thrombectomy, taking those patients to NIR um, at these centers across the United States, specifically here for the comprehensive centers. We know for our firefighters and paramedics out there that five inch supply line strokes, large vascular strokes, cause a great deal of damage. You can lose up to 27 million brain cells a minute um, for these large vascular strokes. Oftentimes they're showing us really big signs and symptoms. And so the benefit to this unit is not only initiating the, the first therapy of TPA, but more importantly to that, being able to amplify the information being provided to the neurointerventionalist who could be considering this as a postural thrombectomy patient or a case for them to proceed with. On some of the scans that we do in the mobile stroke unit, if the large vascular um, uh, or, or large vessel rather stroke is substantial enough, we refer to that as hyperdensity, and you can pick those up on the imaging that we do have in the back of the mobile stroke unit. And we've had a number of those throughout our last year of operation where we were able to speak directly with the neurologist and say, and have them review the imaging to announce the fact that we definitely have a large vessel occlusion stroke and it is very clearly defined on the imaging we're receiving very quickly and early in the case. That's some pretty cool stuff. So it, it, the three of us on this call, we, we nerd out on data and we uh, nerd yeah. out on patient care. Uh, I, I've known you for a while and, and you fall right into the, the same category as Eric and myself. So two-part question. Um, you mentioned a little bit of research that the mobile stroke unit is part of. What, what else is going on research-wise with the stroke unit? And then where does it go from here? Where, what does the future hold for Central Ohio mobile stroke unit as far as patient care and, and delivering kind of the, the next level? Well, in the spirit of uh, defining myself as just as you described me, I will try to do a very good job of keeping a, this at a 30,000 foot view. Uh, I could probably waste many, many hours talking about this, but you know, what kind of research are we involved in? As you asked that question, I immediately thought of the fact that the mobile stroke unit is a research project within itself. And I think that's important for EMS providers to understand and recognize that we as a team are not declaring that this is the future of, of stroke care. Uh, we are trying to find a better way, and we are looking at being able to prove a, hypo a hypothesis to show efficacy and efficiencies. In addition to that, what's the future? We spend countless hours a week partnering with the other mobile stroke units around the country. We estimate there's roughly 25, and that estimation comes merely from the fact that we're so early in these kind of programs from the overall standpoint of what neuroscience is in the world, that we are just as of February of 2020, beginning to organize in a, a mobile stroke association that we're all gonna be part of. Um, these are programs from around the world. It is referred to as PRESTO, P-R-E-S-T-O. So if anyone listening would like to, to find more information, go to that website or Google, uh, search those that, that, that organization but we are funneling a ton of information back to be able to share among all of the units to understand what does the future hold. Many of the other programs throughout the country are beginning to add additional mobile stroke programs. They've been operating for a little bit longer uh, than, than we have been, and they are believing that the efficacy of the units is being proven in the data, and so they believe that they need additional vehicles. I don't know what it holds here in Central Ohio. What I can tell you is we absolutely have an open mind among all of our partners. We have an open mind in terms of our physicians, and we just want to have the innovation and, and or innovative minds enough to be able to explore the different options and different spaces to figure out what does work. What we don't want is any delays in patient care. We do not want to create a barrier just because we have this vehicle from patients getting to the hospital in, a, in an effective and time efficient manner to receive this important type of care that's already been established and we know that it works. Nate, where do you see the mobile stroke unit going in the future in the next you know, five years or even 10 years in the region? 
are you are you referencing just geographic location? I just thinking future future objectives. Where where is this going? What are the developments in the field going to be? Uh, think, what think, what type yeah. of data do you expect to get from some of these research studies that are that are ongoing? Yeah, I think that you know at a very high level we want to be able to prove that this type of care does work. Um, I think that the future is going to be as we look at kind of the geographical coverage, the actual roads that we travel, the partners that we work with in the EMS field, you know, many folks ask the very fair question as, doesn't a mobile stroke unit built as this one do better or do or serve well in the suburbia or the rural environment and not sitting in an urban environment as this vehicle? We've learned a lot about that decision that we've made um, it was driven on the fact that we knew that if we went to rural Ohio, that our run volume or the amount of times we went out to care for patients would be much, much lower. And we wanted to be able to understand the data behind this unit. And so that was one of the reasons why it landed here in central Ohio. Last year, we took 1,867 runs, I believe it was. Um, and so we have data, we have lots of information. And so we are right now in the moment of digging through that information. You know, many of us would probably say, just let's see the numbers and talk about the numbers. But as I know you both can relate, it takes a great deal of time from an analytical standpoint to task the data with questions, um, to work with a great deal of research minded folks who can help us look at the different pieces and parts of the information to answer your very question of what is the future. I think in the immediate, our minds are this unit is going to continue to go out the door as you saw here earlier in this conversation. Um, we're going to continue to look at meeting the metric of doing the right thing at the right time for the right patient with the hopes that in the end, whenever we draw the data out uh, from the, the vehicle itself, that it proves to be a new way of doing stroke care here in Central Ohio. Well, thank you very much, Nate. Um, this was this was amazing. We certainly appreciate your time. You and Dr. Hicks and your whole team are doing great work with the mobile stroke unit. Uh, we we appreciate your time this morning. Dr. Kelno appreciates it. Drew, thanks for thanks for joining as well. Uh, I do want to thank Mark Huckabee with Ohio Health EMS as well uh, for the behind the scenes work in recording this. If any of our listeners have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is eric.cortez at ohiohealth.com, and I'll, and I'll get back to you fairly quickly. But, Nathan, again, thank you for your time this morning, and great work. This is really good. Thank you. Hey, I, I can't appreciate uh, all of you guys enough. Um, if there is any questions or, or concerns, by all means, please reach out Dr. Cortez, and he'll forward, his, uh, or forward it to, to myself. Uh, we'd love to share it at a post-COVID date. Uh, we do have an observation program that we'd like to get back online, and so we'd invite folks, you know, at a later date, hopefully when everything settles down in the world of COVID right now, uh, to come out even ride with the unit and see these things firsthand. Thank you, Nate. Thanks, guys.